idea, self-defense. And the lady learned it all at a school like this. The violent roars of Utskiai mean aggressors beware, the chop chop is coming. Centuries ago, the Zen Buddhist monks of China developed this art to protect themselves against robbers. The Japanese improved it and made it a system of universal physical culture as we know it today. Speed, surprise, and strategy are its hallmarks. And nothing matches the lightning effect of the hand chop or the finger jab when you know about human anatomy. Against a karate expert, an adversary is doomed when he makes the first move. Pasquale runs a dojo or school in Closter, New Jersey, which typically follows Japanese tradition. The bows mean respect to the founder, to the teacher, and most significant of all, to each other. Lessons and practice begin and end with exercises to condition the body. This develops strong and supple muscles and lessens the chances of strain or injury. It also does something else. It relaxes the mind and body and reminds you that self-enlightenment is as much a part of this discipline as self-defense. Learning to fall is vital in this sport. Everyone practices ukimi for the falling technique until he does it perfectly without hurting himself. For the fall, oddly enough, is one of your weapons against an opponent. Now the class pairs off for attack and defense. Great care must be taken never to injure your partner, who knows enough about the holes not to resist them. and sex make no difference. For the secret lies not in opposing strength to strength, but in falling backwards or sidewards and pulling your opponent off balance. A strong attacker, given the direction, can destroy himself faster than anyone else. The black skirts are traditional too. Clothes, incidentally, serve an important function. They're cumbersome to wear, but they provide protection in practice. Notice the emphasis placed on leverage, foot action, and body movement in throwing an adversary. Every aggressor is vulnerable. Even the worst situations can be countered and turned into his destruction, provided the jabs, chops, and pulls have quickness, precision, and skill. In an actual attack, an expert, man or woman, can easily harm an opponent. Against a partner, one pulls the blows, but a real chop can cause paralysis or bone fractures. attention is given to strangle holes because they are likely to be encountered in many different forms. Heaven help the masher who picks the wrong victim. Conditioning the limbs against Makawara turns them into potential guided missiles. By slow degrees, you can develop the edge of a hand to the hardness of a blade and make a fingertip as strong as an iron point. In slow motion, you see a well-trained karate defender use his feet against a dummy. A very short man can kick over six feet high and break a neck with his bare toes. If this weren't slow motion, you could scarcely follow the double kick. It happened so fast.
To suggest the damage that could be inflicted by the bare foot, the expert applies his against two one-inch boards. Tameshawari is the practice of breaking wood, tile, brick, and stone with a bare limb. In the words of a master, it is not a true art of karate, but rather a spectacular show of strength. Even in slow motion, the chop of a little finger has the impact of a hammer. relatively young boy employs the Tameshawari technique against three one-inch boards, the equivalent of a grown man's backbone. The objective is concentration of strength at the point of impact. As Mike attempts to break a concrete block, we hear the karate creed. I come to you with only karate, empty hands. I have no weapons. But if I am forced to defend myself, my honor, or my principles, or should it be a matter of life or death, right or wrong, then here are my weapons, karate, my empty hands.